Hustle, integrity, soul, passion, love. Welcome to the Ink Pole Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that I've been building Ink Pulp Instruction as a online educational art tool where you can purchase episodes, uh, learn from artists, from professional artists, from amazing artists, from the best artists, and help yourself become a better artist, but also to help you uh, learn how to become a professional comic book artist. So I've been building that for almost two years now. We are, when this comes out, we're going to be up to like episode five. Yeah, we should be when the, yeah, when this comes out, we'll be at episode five. So, uh, and then by the end of the year, we'll be at episode seven. And then in 2022, we're ramping it up to one episode a month. So it's going it's going it's starting to take off it's starting to do well and uh, the future is looking awesome for this so today I want to give you another little taste of ink pulp instruction in previous episodes I gave you a taste of episode one with me episode two with Eric Kennedy today is episode three with my good friend Jim Mafood and that's what you're gonna check out right after I stop talking so uh, please enjoy. Jim is, is a rare artist. He's a very um, individual voice. And he's built a career unlike anyone I know. And uh, he's, he's done a lot. He's constantly inspiring me. And I'm sure he's going to inspire you. Lots of knowledge in this one. Check out this free sample of Ink Pulp Instruction. Click the link in the description or, yeah, in the description below and and get involved. Ink Pulp Army is rising. Hop on board. Peace. Uh, Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Uh... We'll talk about tools after this. Yeah, for this piece, I usually start off with this tool. Uh, and that's your parallel pen. Yeah. And um, this one pen kind of gives me most of the lines that I'm looking for in, in what I'm drawing. So do you start by just knocking out your like contour lines before you start adding blacks and textures and patterns? It depends. It depends on the piece. Um, sometimes I will do contrast and stuff as I'm working just to like help define shape so like this right here I'm kind of I gotcha I got gotcha. okay that's gonna be her her face um, I mean for me like you just did something I'm terrified to do which is not to pencil in the face yeah yeah I didn't even add that yet like that's one of those things of oh I'll just figure that out in the inking phase so, I guess the goal of your pencils is to put down as little as possible but giving you what you need yeah, but again, it it sometimes depends on the piece because like when I'm penciling comics, I do tend to do more full blown, just full pencils. Okay. Uh, because I need to know that it's all gonna work out as a whole. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. So, yeah, man, it, it sometimes it's difficult for me to talk about certain things because every piece sort of has its own approach. Right. Um, Is that like listening to the piece as you're doing it, like Michelangelo finding the sculpture and like the stone is, the sculpture's in the stone. Right, yeah, Waiting to yeah. be revealed. It, um, yeah, I mean, that's, there's, uh, I try and explain, is there a method to all this madness? But sometimes for me, it's like, uh, I sometimes I'm just, winging it on the the pending? Do you have a compositional plan for your spot blacks? Or do you just 
look and see where it feels like it needs it. I, I have both, but on this, like as I'm doing it, I, I sort of already know like, well, her shirt is, is gonna be black. Right. So in order to have the weight and the contrast with um, her, her flesh, her, the arm is, is, is not gonna be covered by anything. So this black and then this black of the shirt is instantly gonna make this pop out. Right, so that, yeah, that's, that's a wise perfectly sound decision. So um, so talk to me about the, this parallel pen. Why you like using it, what it gives you. Yeah, uh, I started using these felt tipped calligraphy pens years ago because I liked the idea of one tool being able to deliver these different line weights of, of like something as thin as this and then something as thick as that and then just with the twist of the of the nib of the you're drawing you're inking with a, a square piece of metal basically right right and so i like that idea and then but the felt tip ones they wear down so easily they you basically destroy them right very quickly and um ashley wood actually turned me on to this brand the pilot parallel pen years ago and I started experimenting around with it. And um, it just, I love the idea of like, one pen can just give you these different lines. You don't have to interrupt the drawing and you can, like instead of picking up all these different tools, I can just continually work and um, make it happen, you know? Right, it, but I mean like everything you're describing is like, oh, a brush does that, but I'm That's guessing it. that with like with that awkward square metal tip it doesn't allow you to make like controlled or and this is the the wrong word but i think the right idea to make um graceful lines yeah and like, you like that what that brings to the work is like the pen is giving you something it's a clumsy tool, is that fair to say? Yeah, like I like, like see how that line right there became a little shaky? Yeah. Like I like that. Okay. I like the unpredictable, um, it doesn't have to be perfect, like I'm not going for a super tight, um, I don't even know how to Controlled. describe it. Yeah, like the, you know how the 90s comics, man? Like slick. It's so slick. Yeah. Every line has to be there and has to be perfect and with yes. with this it almost creates a um it almost creates an environment for unpredictableness right so you're so part of the attraction of this pen for you is that it it's a chaotic tool and you you want that you don't want something that allows you to start getting too controlled right right because i want to i want to have um room for stuff like this where it's like okay I guess that there's like a fringe now on her uh -huh. panties like sure why not and um, you know it uh, the unknowingness of what is gonna happen while I'm working is, is sort of one of the exciting parts of making the work so you're very much into the idea that the art is the journey of making the piece not the piece in the end sort of yeah it's almost like a um, abstract expressionist idea where it's like it, the the action of making it is what you like what you just said is yeah. more interesting and exciting than making something um, that's for everyone or th that is digestible or, or something that's easy to yeah like it's not pop like I think of pop music like that like it's like oh yeah everyone can kind of just enjoy this but there's nothing to really sink your teeth into. Right. Yeah, pop is, is like, it's easy to digest, but there's no soul. There's no, di yes. Uh, yeah, no soul. That's a good way of putting it. At, yeah. the, at the end of the day, so it, um, and like for the face, like I don't really know this what, right what's going to happen, but I'm assuming like, okay, there should be an eyebrow right here, and then there can be an eye like right here, and then do we see? Her other it's like an old school Casio watch. I got this in Japan. I was just gonna ask, is that from, Japan? from a vending from a vending machine? <laughs> of course. Um, so I am gonna for like her little nose line. I'm not 
super confident about how small okay, that's going to be. Okay, this is interesting. So, so you get into a zone where you need some control and you switch tool. Yeah, just boom with a, um, a micron and I'll probably do, I'm going to go ahead and do the mouth that way too and just assume like, give her a bit of a smile and like, okay, that the mouth is, goes there. Right. See, and, um, Instead of doing the other eye here, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fudge like a bit of a shadow from her hair there and yeah. just know that the viewer knows that there's an eye somewhere here. Sure. But stylistically, I don't really think I need that for this piece. Do you find that part of your journey in creating is, is um, trying to discover what you don't need to put in mm -hmm. that allows the the viewer the reader to become a participant like they almost like complete part of the drawings and viewing it yeah and i think that um the more experienced comic book or illustration fan or art appreciator that is looking at art their mind knows how to fill in the blanks right. of what is missing Again, going against the idea that this is pop music, this is something for someone with a, who wants a little more from their their art experience. Yeah, and because I, I like um, I hate the idea of having to you know hold the viewer's hand through all of this and over explaining things. So for me, I mean, I don't I don't want to talk down to the audience or the viewer. So I okay. I rely on them sort of knowing the language of some of this stuff mm -hmm. and, and being able to fill in the blanks. This is the Ink the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics, hip hop, life, 